So I got a couple things going on right now that I'm pretty excited about. Felt like sharing. Vlog style. Free flowing thoughts. I'm a little feeling a little scatter rain right now, so there's your disclaimer. Might get a little tangenty. Do my best. But sometimes I, I do these videos honestly just for myself, just to just to put it out there and reflect back on later. A lot of times I reflect on years ago when I'd, I call it calling a shot when I would I'd say you know what I'll bet this is gonna happen and then if it ends up happening like a half yard half court shot that swishes in kind of feel like man did you guys see that I made that shot if nobody's there to see it, it's, you know, that much less satisfying, you know? But if you put it out there, if you record it, and you could show it, you'd be like, yo, I called that shot. Look at that, and went in. So, that's a big part of, like, the content I've made in the past in my old channel that's got taken down. I like predicting prices and stuff, you know? Hey, man, this game's 15 bucks. I think, I think it's a good buy right now. I'll bet this game's going to be 50 bucks by the end of the year. If it happens, man, it's fun to have it, have it recorded. So, <clears throat> I wonder if I can get that old channel back. Like it's still on Google. Like, it's, it's still there. It just says, like, it says whatever it says when you've been three strikes and you're out. And I never challenge the strikes, you know. It's John Hancock strikes, so. Fall striked. Maybe I can get it back. That'd be cool. Because on that old channel, I'm already on tangents, by the way. Sorry. Um, on that old channel, um, I called the shot about two shots. I called um, Wada Games when they first started getting their name out there. When it was just first known that hey, this company's going to start creating games. I was like, this is bad news. This is, they're gonna they're gonna go big. This is gonna become a sensational thing. This is gonna shake up the hobby. Watch out. It's a company called Wada. You all are gonna know about this company here soon. I was right about that. That was a great shot call. I mean, that was it's kind of like a free throw. Also, uh, one one time I was doing a bunch of videos at the warehouse at an event where a bunch of people were there buying, selling, and trading. I just titled my videos Goofy Names, and uh, I think one of the titles I made was Tommy Tallarico's Amico is a Scam. This was early on. This is when I first heard about it. He said something about, like, pre-orders for some Founders Edition or something, or sold out, and he was trying to, like, market it, like, trying to do a marketing stunt. I was like, this is bullshit. I want to try to get his attention. And sure enough, like, he was on Atari Age forums, somebody shared it to him, and they were going off on me. I was getting getting a bunch of troll comments and thumbs down and stuff. So I shook them up a little bit. Back when simply a video title dissing the Amico would stir that motherfucker up. So that's kind of funny. Times have changed now. Now he's overwhelmed with it. <clears throat> so anyways, tangent over. What's my shot call? I don't have a shot call tonight. Just... I don't know why I was on that tangent. Um, anyways, that's why I'm putting stuff out there. Fun to reflect on. So, big thing on my plate right now is an upcoming Tampa Bay Trade Day event. If you're on Facebook, if you're listening to this and you're on Facebook, no matter where you live, if you're if you're into video game groups, if you're a member of a couple different video game commerce groups where people sell and trade games, um, consider joining Tampa Bay Trade Day. We're, we're really focused. Our, our objective of the group is local area meetups to buy, sell, and trade with each other, collectors and business owners. Um, but, I mean, by all means, people would love the opportunity to have other buyers and people to trade with, even if they're 
even if shipping is required. So consider joining that. Um, but finding a, a good quality venue to do public events is always a bit of a challenge, you know, because I'm not doing this for profit at all. It's all, it's non-profit. It's really um, negative profit. It's costly because I pay for Facebook marketing and pay for venues and I don't charge admission. So the way I see it, it's like my karma balance because I'm, I'm a profiteer in the hobby. I'm making money off of a hobby that other people enjoy. And there, there is a little bit of guilt that comes attached to that because I have a heart, you know? So that's, that's really the main thing I do to give back because I don't really give back with my prices. I tend to be kind of steep. I tend to be top dollar with my prices. Check out this beetle. Look at that guy. To give you a sense of scale. I have huge hands, by the way. Humongous. It's a big ass beetle. <clears throat> so that's like my karma balance. I'll be honest, there's for sure there's an element of like knowing that self sacrifice comes back at you. You know, look at Jesus Christ, the historical biblical figure. You know, that, that man rose to power, not through money, not through um, physical power, not through power of controlling people, but just by being selfless, being good, and followers. Talk about YouTube and followers. Like, you get followers when you're, when you're providing something that people need in their lives or something that people benefit from, from being good. So it comes back at me for sure. Um, the original idea for doing public meetups, come, come one, come all, buy, sell, trade your video games. I see you're selling games on Facebook Marketplace. Consider coming out on Saturday to Flea Market X. A bunch of us collectors are meeting up, bring this out. You can trade it away, you can sell it. The idea came when I had, I was just getting out of the Air Force and I was starting to set up at the local flea market outside of Eglin Air Force Base, selling my goods. And um, it was re-enlistment time and I was like, I don't think I'm gonna sign. I think I wanna pursue entrepreneurship. So, so I started getting ready for that and get my brick and mortar store and I don't know I was probably smoking weed or something but to get creative ideas like this because it's quite counterintuitive the idea to use your store as a venue for all your customers all the people you get to know that are into collecting they come into trade all the time they sell you stuff they buy stuff and tell them all to bring their stuff in not to sell it or trade it to me but to sell and trade with everyone else on top of that I'll buy all the beer like free beer on top of that one of the guys that would always come in worked at Domino's Pizza I think he got the hookup man 50% off pizzas so I can provide that cheap pizzas so pizza beer like why wouldn't you come out you have no reason not to and it's just a good time community you get to know other people and this is where it doesn't take much uh, counterintuitive thought. It's like, of course that's gonna work. Of course that's gonna be, it's gonna bring people out. They're going to like that. And I knew that that would come back at me in the form of getting more regulars to the shop. Just good, good PR, I guess. Good PR, public relations, right? That's what that stands for. It's very good PR. It's a good thing for a business to do. So it definitely worked, worked really well. Um, that was really like the backbone of Video Game Trade Post, was the name of the store. That's what we were definitely known for and remembered as. It's the place that did trade night. So, so here in Tampa, we call it Trade Day, because 
opened up a flea market shop. It's the daytime when we do these trade events, so call it trade day. Anyways, tangent there. So, so with trade day, group's grown quite a bit because we've been doing it for like four years now. But due to COVID, due to just busyness and kind of a drop off in group activity, it's been kind of quiet for about a year and a half. I haven't been doing as much. That's where if you ever see a video where I'm at the warehouse and there's a good amount of people there with stuff set up on tables. Like I call those mini meets, doing like a warehouse mini meet. And those are usually trusted people only. I don't I definitely don't go public announcing like come one, come all, come to the warehouse. Um, so those are people I already know. And they're good, but I, I, they're totally stress-free, like I don't put any effort into marketing them, because I don't need to. There's a little warehouse group chat on Facebook, where we just announce a date and time and people come out. But, this is the first event in over a year, I think. It's a big public event. And one of, one of our members had connections with, or just confidence in and his writing ability and confidently confident enough to approach a, a local establishment called MOSI, M-O-S-I. It's a museum of science and industry. And if anybody, if you're not familiar with that, I'm guessing this is like a common thing throughout the United States because I remember when I used to go to Ohio to visit my grandparents, there's a place called COSI. COSI or whatever, C-O-S-I, and it was a very similar thing. I don't know what the C stood for, but it's their they're hands-on science museums. A lot of just um, interesting stuff. I can't, I can't really explain it too well, I guess. Like, I did a walkthrough at MOSI because they gave us the green light on it. They wanted us to come check the place out and plan out where vendors can be located and they have like a VR ride I'm not sure what the theme is but I'm guessing you're exploring Mars or something um, they have a planetarium they have Lego type stuff stuff where you can mess around with tubes and pipes and run water through your, your pipe lines it's just weird shit you know stuff that's fun <clears throat> but they're uh Mosi does they have a, an exhibit room that's pretty spacious and they do seasonal exhibits I think they usually last about three months and probably do like four different exhibits a year and right now their exhibit is um, retro video game themed I'm not sure if it's it really is retro yeah it's it's arcades that are set up free play and a few consoles that are set up free play and then they have one of the workers at Mosi who I got to meet is a local collector who doesn't really get out much like he's he's not wasn't familiar with Henry Trade Day doesn't doesn't really he's not big into collecting but he has really cool stuff that was on display a lot of import consoles and stuff I wasn't even familiar with and they're all under under glass with a little placard explaining what it is so that's going on in their exhibit room. I think that's what made the light bulb go off in Paul's mind. Paul being the guy that approached Mosi, saying, hey, I come from this community called Tampa Bay Trade Day. We've got about a thousand members. We do local events. We'd like to try to help raise funds for Mosi and bring people, raise Mosi awareness, bring people in by hosting one of our events. And of course, it's like a big scratch to our back too. You know, that's a, hey, that's what we have to offer you. But you guys also have a badass venue that we can use. So, so immediately, I'm feeling like the pressure. Like I got to put on a big show here. Like I got to up my typical marketing budget for this event. Um, I got to make sure we fill every vendor slot. Thirty vendors is what what we said we could obtain. They say, yeah, we can accommodate 30. 
and I got to make sure that's filled out, you know. I got to make sure that all the vendors are satisfied that they that's always a pressure point too cuz like you reach out to vendors telling them that this is a great opportunity to sell and trade your inventory. If they don't have enough buyers, then they never come to another Tampa Bay Trade Day event. So it's like double pressure. You got to get the attendees, you got to get the the vendors too. So <clears throat> Cool exhibit going on green light Tampa Bay trade day we're in so so that's on the horizon uh, ads are going out on Facebook get to target your demographics male female age range interests I guarantee you level one online meets my demographics there you know mega man 40 <laughs> 40 years old mega man Lives with mother is not an option, but I would have used that too because that tends to be a collector demographic. So maybe Jason will see the ad. Maybe he'll show up. That'd be cool. Wouldn't mind meeting the guy. So Mosi's a big one. Excited for that. Definitely gonna film that. Just a cool venue, man. Because we're gonna be like on the on the same floor space that they use for for their hands-on science stuff. This is going to be a bizarre looking event, but we're familiar with doing bizarre events. We've done, done them at Pro Wrestling, Tampa Bay Pro Wrestling, We've teamed up with them where wrestling go, is going on in one area of the floor while people are buying, selling, and trading games. So we embrace the weird, the bizarre. So, <clears throat> is there anything else to say about Mosi? I guess the rest will just come out when uh, when it's the day of. I'll do some good filming. Devin's gonna be there. Mechanical engineer, burgerified Devin. He's gonna be bringing the goods. Buddy from Northwest Florida, Joe Alonzo, with Rad Junk and Rad Bar. He's got great stuff. Got a great business going on. I haven't seen him in a long time. He took over trade night in Northwest Florida after I moved. He was like, dude, I want to keep this thing going. So trade night never even missed a month. Never never skipped a beat. Went straight into rad junk. So honored to have him come down to Tampa, visit for a while. We might go to the castle, local gothic nightclub. Might have some fun Friday night. Blah, blah, blah. Just really excited about Mosi. So film it I'll, I'll get I'll capture the goods man all the rare games then the other thing is I can segue using Tampa Bay Trade Day the group because I have a YouTube channel for Tampa Bay Trade Day I don't upload much because a lot of times I'm doing warehouse mini meets and if I'm filming there I'll just upload it to warehouse Dave channel but like I try to keep Tampa Bay Trade Day nice and clean and on YouTube and just film when it's like solid event, solid stuff. And it's good to just create a an archive of of past activity which I feel I can use if I ever need to prove myself to to anyone. You know, what are these events like? You know, I can just reference I check check this out. Here's a video. Here's what it looks like. So I'll definitely be doing some Tampa Bay Trade Day YouTube channel filming at Mosi. It'd be a proud, proud event to get some footage of. But it was through Tampa Bay Trade Day that YouTube channel that I was contacted by. I'm not gonna name the channel. It'll it'll come out there. Again, this is like part of calling the shot. Like I can just put this out here and then it'll come to fruition. I can say I told you so. I told you I wasn't lying about that. Um so this big YouTuber, he's got well over 500k subs. Forget exactly where he's at. Um, here's a hint. He's oh, this is kind of too heavy of a hint, but he's he's big on uh, something he's known for is Billy Mitchell scandal um, reporting, and those videos got a lot of traffic for him. So, he has a typical type of content that he does, pretty routine, 
routinely covers X, and then occasionally he'll cover like other gaming related controversial type stuff. And a controversy that he is about to blow the lid off of is Wata Games and Heritage Auctions and the individuals that are involved with those companies because they cross over quite a bit. Also Go Collect being another organization that's very shady and involved with manipulating prices, manipulating the market, pump and dump, shameless profiteering, self-interest, etc. And just like another, this 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 company isn't involved, but I feel the same way about uh, Kelsey from Metal Jesus, Metal Jesus Crew, her involvement with the Video Game History Foundation. You know, again, it's like balance your karma. Like if you're doing something self selfish, balance it with selflessness. You know, that's that's okay as long as one isn't grossly greater than the other. As long as your selfishness doesn't grossly exceed your selflessness act you know I think of like somebody that's promoting an event and they're like giving away this $10 Funko Pop if you like comment share subscribe you have to do X Y and Z for me share it to 500 people and you will be entered to win a $10 Funko Pop it's like dude your pathetic act of selflessness is you're asking for way too much selfishness in exchange for for your little fucking grace of selflessness right so this is a tangent now but video game history foundation i have my doubts i have my doubts that that's a, a totally pro fucking board of non-profit selfless shirt off my back busting my ass to preserve history and i'm getting nothing out of it have my doubts about that I just do. That's a story for another time. That's a tangent for another day. Where was I? Tampa Bay Trade Day. YouTuber. So I left, um, Pat the NES Punk was talking about something water recently. Maybe it was the $1.5 million Mario 64 bullshit. One of those typical Pat covering. I can't believe this. This isn't real. And he's right. He knows. Pat really knows. Pat's very in tune with the market. The market side of this hobby means much more to Pat than anything else, for sure. You know, there's a, definitely a reason why 20 years ago he was calling people up in a phone book trying to acquire NWC cartridges and was under zero pressure to sell them when he was getting offers of $2,000, dude. I'll give you $2,000. A few years go by, I'll give you $10,000. He knows better. He knows much better. I'll give you $100,000 for your gold card, Pat. He's not tempted in the least. That dude is making more money on the the growth. I don't want to use the word inflation, but the, the value, the annual value growth of just two video games in his possession. They're growing in value at a rate that most of us don't even make per year. You know, like he sits on his gold car for another five years, he's probably going to be offered a million dollars for it. Right now, maybe you get 200K. Two years ago, maybe 100K. You know what I'm saying? Like the growth of value, when you have that top of the spear, top, top tier piece, the holiest of holy grails, like that's his nest egg. He could. He could quit everything. He quit Patreon, see podcasts, all that stuff. And just sit back and just... I mean, I guess he's got to live, live off something somehow. So, you know what I'm saying. It's smart guy. Smart, uh, in tune with the market kind of guy. He definitely feels the climate of, of the culture. So, tangent. So... I wasn't sure if my Warehouse Dave YouTube channel was blacklisted or whatever from his channel because I've been known from time to time to leave a trollish comment here and there to eat beggars. So I wasn't sure so I was like, I used Tampa Bay Trade Day YouTube account to write a comment 
about WADA and Heritage Auctions um, on Pat's video. And what I said was that there's definitely a ring of investors, this is just roughly what I said, ring of investors that are cornering the market on things that WADA shills on Heritage to create a new perceived value. WADA also does marketing stunts with Pawn Stars and Kotaku, paying Kotaku to publish art articles and push them out, get information out, promoting what? $100,000 record breaking Super Mario Brothers sale, you know? It's like, they've got, they've got their investments and they're not very widespread. And they're very, very cliche, very, uh, what you'd expect to be, what the, what the masses, mainstream, would not be surprised by. Oh, first print, best known condition copy of, oh, I know Kirby, I know Pokemon, you know, so it's like, they target that stuff. That stuff's too common to, to try to corner, you can't corner Pokemon Red. You know, try to price control Pokemon Red, but you can do it with factory sealed. You know, you got deep enough pockets and you go in with a plan a few years back. You can make sure that 95% of all that circulate, that surface and sell, go into your ring of investors. You start to corner it. Especially when you get those nicest ones. That's where Wada really has its hand in the game. Sorry for the wind. I could turn back and maybe be less windy. Let me try that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but that's where, man, grading authorities have so much power to uh, manipulate prices, to control prices. You know? Why'd that one go for a million dollars? Well, it was 9.8. Yeah, but this one went for 20,000. Well, yes, that was 9.6, though. Silly, silly boy. That was 9.6. Don't you understand? There's only two known 9.8s. You know, it's like crack those things out of the water slab <laughs> and fucking look at them. Just crack those fuckers out of the water slab. And you point at that one, say that one's 1. 1.5 million and that one's 20k. People would fucking laugh because it is silly. It's a fucking joke. You know, this is this is not blowing any minds, you know. But, man, shameless profiteers definitely embrace it. Join any sealed game collecting groups on Facebook and they have rules like, this is no joke now, they have rules like, we will not tolerate um, emoji reactions that are laughing. That's one. No laughing emojis. You will be removed from <laughs> Fucking what, what world do we live in right now, you know? First of all, emojis, emoji reactions. We live in that reality now, social media. But hey, that won't be tolerated in our sealed game collecting group. If a seller wants too much, if you think it's too much, mind your own fucking business, you know? You, you laugh at them, you're out of here. Don't you dare comment with anything negative. You're out of here, you know? So... That's the, that's the click with these gurus of the sealed market. They're all out to uh, protect each other, protect themselves, and just rape as hard as they can to these noob investors, these, oh fuck, what's his name? Popular YouTuber that fought Mayweather, Pokemon, Charizard, graded necklace guy. You know what I'm talking about, you know? young young money that's following people like that that want to get into investing in video games you know it's like these these dorks are in to take that money tangent there sorry so so back to trade day on pat's video so i so that was my thing was like man they got a ring of investors and this is the kicker. I said, co-founder of WADA, Mark Haspel, Denise Kahn being the other co-founder, he's credited as the founder. Um, co-founder 
Mark Haspel has bought two unopened cases, which a case of N64 games has six games inside of it. So two, two unopened cases of Mega Man 64. He purchased those from my friend Devin, who's who I've done videos with, Burger Fight Devin. Um, so Devin had two sealed cases of Mega Man 64. Mark Haspel bought them both. <clears throat> That's, you know, that one might argue in the, in the sealed collecting group that, well, he has a right to invest if he wants, you know, with his personal money. He's a Mega Man collector. Why is he not allowed to do that? Well, it's, it's indicative of some foul play, isn't it? You know, when Mega Man 64 sealed becomes shilled on heritage for thousands of dollars I mean, he's buying them for 120 a pop within these cases cases now so he gets to open them and grade them 9.8 right um you start getting shilled and mark's banking off of what he knows is going to be manipulated upwards you know so so i got secondhand information on that you know my one of my closest friends dealt with this guy in person numerous times and he's always buying Mario, Pokemon, Zelda, CIBs, nice condition. Meets Devin at conventions, he's a big spender. So Devin likes the guy, Devin's cool with him. But I don't like it, because I know they're up to no good and it's gonna destroy this hobby. And this is what I do for a living, so I don't like it. I don't much care for it, it's unethical regardless. So I'm also in the right by, by letting people know this guy's corrupt, you know? These, Grading authority guys aren't supposed to be dabbling in the market side of the hobby. You know, that's a huge conflict of interest when you catch these guys with an eBay account selling games that they grade themselves. You know, I don't really have to go into too much detail, right? I mean, just think about it for a second, think about how corrupt that is. So, <clears throat> so I leave that comment and a couple weeks go by and I get a message on Facebook, not to Tampa Bay Trade Day business page or anything like that, but to my personal Facebook um, from a pretty big YouTuber who I've been subscribed to for a long time because I like his content. Um, and he's saying that he's doing a, an investigation into WADA and Heritage Auctions, and he saw my comment he asked if I was the one who made that comment as Tampa Bay Trade Day. So that means he, he looked on Facebook for Tampa Bay Trade Day after reading a comment I left on a YouTube channel called Tampa Bay Trade Day. He found it on Facebook, and at the time I might have been the only admin of the group. Um, he contacted me about it. It was really cool. I was honored, man. I felt special. So I was like, fuck yeah, man, that was me. Where am I going with this? Oh, well, it just took me a while to get back to him, but I got as much info as I could because I know a lot of people in the local area and Mark Haspel's in the local area. Um, also, just have a network. Been been buying, selling, and trading games since 2004, you know, so I, I know a lot of people, and there's a lot of people I can ask, you know, like, hey, have you ever sold anything to Mark Haspel? Have you ever sold anything to Denise Khan? Oh, yeah? What was it? how much and when and so I got a lot of information that I was able to give back to this guy and also just stuff I know about the company shady stuff about Nintendo age closing down which think about it those forums those Nintendo age forums of user provided information was invaluable it was priceless information for people like the video game history foundation or People that want to corner markets on stuff and manipulate prices it's it's very useful to to not only have that information but to remove that information from the public to privatize that information archive it get rid of it not only we have it <coughs> it's powerful stuff that oh, sounds bizarre give some examples like the the whole list of every known nwc was only reported to nintendo age there's no other source that has a good info good 
list of that. And unless people were savvy enough to archive it themselves before Nintendo Age suddenly shut down, it wasn't like they announced this where people could start archiving this information. It just suddenly page unavailable. Um, that was intentional. So unless people did that, like, there's a whole lot of information about very limited stuff. I'm talking about certain five screw variants where there's only three or four known to exist. All kinds of niche collector info. And now it's all in the hands of a company called Go Collect. And it happens that Go Collect is involved with none other than WADA and Heritage. Um, that's all information I wasn't aware of, but in talks with this guy, he's done a ton of digging, been in contact with reserved investments and lots of other people doing his digging as much as he can. And there's a lot of dirt that's going to be exposed. So look forward to that. Um, proud to be a part of that. Proud to provide him a few screenshots of, of, you know, what little proof I could provide through screenshots. A lot of it was hearsay, you know. Take my word for it, but you know, my buddy Josh listed a Star Fox Super Weekend cartridge, very rare, very pricey. Buyer Mark Haspel on eBay. You know, you can contact Josh if you want, he'll tell you. But I think eBay, eBay um, data has expired on that. Buddy Ryan with his sealed Turbo Graphics games contacted through Facebook. How much for the four sealed turbo graphics games? And do you have any sealed or mint condition CIB, Mario, Pokemon, Zelda, Castlevania, Mega Man, etc.? You know, got screenshots of that one because I was on Facebook. So I was able to provide that. So hopefully that makes the video. That'd be cool. I feel like I did something good towards fending off water from spoiling this market. So provided what I could with screenshots and just dumped as much as I knew and so much of what I what I was encouraging him to look into he immediately just gave me feedback saying well it turns out this XYZ turns out go collect director is on the water board or whatever I don't know I forget the details but the exciting stuff excited for that I'll make sure to share the video when it comes out I think that's about it that about wraps it up exciting stuff I think I got a couple other videos on this phone that I'm probably gonna binge upload so get a three for three at once talk to you guys later